here I'm gonna do this little video and answer a couple of quick questions so one of the questions was uh, cylinder head temperature how hot should it be and uh, I have never installed a cylinder head temperature on this particular car so I'm installing one now this is the harness here getting it all squared away uh, one indication that the cylinder heads aren't running too hot though is uh, you want to look at the condition of the cylinder heads and the color of the valve cover area you know if it's nice and clean and aluminum looking then you know you're not getting the oil too hot when it starts getting brown in there and black and discolored then you know you definitely got a temperature issue uh, the ideal cylinder head temperature would be in the uh, high 200s uh, under 300 but you'll probably see more 300 than 200s uh, very few motors run cool so uh, curious to see what this one is I talked to Scooter and he said that he's got a couple motors that are in the two high 290s but uh, the mid 300s are more common so uh, we want to try to keep it in the 200 so we can to keep it cool I'm gonna add another uh, oil cooler to this car I've got it looped right now there the full flow I'm gonna put a 96 pass cooler on here with a fan to uh, get the temperature down I've noticed that my temperature dipstick comes on uh, interstate driving usually when you get off the interstate uh, we installed this the other day I had uh, one question from Ziggy wanting to know if it wired into the uh, factory oil light and it does and that's the beauty of this it's very easy to install you just drop it down in here uh, hook your wire up and then it piggybacks off the original uh, oil pressure switch so you're able to retain your uh, factory oil pressure switch and what this does is when it reaches temperature this wire comes around and grounds to the screw it uh, turns your light on in your dash and lets you know that your oil temperatures reach 227 degrees and you should slow down a little bit so uh, I've only seen the light once uh, and it was when I got off the interstate it was a really hot day uh, in the upper 90s so normal cruising the light never comes on nighttime driving we went to the beach last night and uh, 80 miles an hour 75 no problem no light uh, I do have an oil leak that sprung up here this uh, tower thing came loose and I'm not able to tighten it so I'm gonna have to put a gasket in there and uh, tighten that what do you need Andrea I was just telling you keys and money are by the way anyway that's where we're at with that uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch on was I know that uh, somebody in the garage had picked up a couple sets of cadrons and they were wondering about the holes in the manifold and uh, those holes are for these uh, this tube right here it's a balanced tube and uh, the tube runs from one manifold to the other behind the fan housing it's usually a good location the original Kdron manifolds were steel and they had a, a steel tube that ran back there but the aluminum ones uh, have a fitting screw in them and what you need to do is just connect a, a tube from one manifold to the other behind the fan housing and that's a, a balance tube it helps with the synchronization of the carburetors and uh, it makes it much easier to set the carburetors up I had to eliminate that tube temporarily on the bus for a little bit and uh, it did make it hard to tune so uh, you want to be sure to employ that tube those fittings uh, seal them up real good and then just get you some uh, type 2 fuel lines that I like to use works real well back there the cloth stuff I had a piece of that somewhere oh, right here so the type 2 fuel line is really good for a balance tube uh, of course you know if you wanted to put a bigger one back there it wouldn't hurt so that's what those fittings are for and uh, so we hit on the temperature dipstick the ideal uh, cylinder head temperature and uh, stuff like that so I guess if you do have a real high cylinder at temperature, you know you're going to have to jet your carburetors, probably fatten them up a little bit. That's uh, another way you can cool the engine down, make sure that it's jetted properly. So we're going to try to repair that breather today, uh, rotate the tires, and uh, install this uh, temperature sensor, and uh, get that all in the car. i got to hide the wire and uh, get that plugged through the front firewall. 
and get it plugged into my cylinder head temperature gauge there. So I'm going to uh, put the oil temperature gauge on here also in conjunction with the uh, stick. A couple people would ask what's a good location for the, uh, sorry about shaky cam, the oil temperature uh, sender. I've seen them a couple different places. I've actually seen it screwed in the uh, oil relief uh, hole there. And uh, if you're going to do that, make sure that the uh, sender has the same amount of distance as the stock screw so you don't uh, mess up your plunger location or your spring preload in there. You want to make sure all that's the same, same, same tension, same height, all that stuff. Another spot is the 211 pickup here. You can go into there. Uh, you got to drill a plate, tap a sensor in here. This is an oil temperature sensor. It's an autometer, not a VDO. The VDO sensor is uh, quite a bit larger. So uh, I've also seen them in the strainer plate. Uh, if you can get it at the top of the oil or the oil's returning down in the case, you get a more accurate temperature a lot of times in the bottom of the sump. That's the uh, coolest oil, you know, at the bottom of the sump. But it's also the sump that the motor's actually seen, you know, when you sample it at the strainer plate. That's the temperature the oil is It's going to the bearing. So never been a really good argument with me not to put it in the strainer. I sort of like the strainer, uh, even though they say that that oil is cooler. Uh, you know, that is the oil that your bearings are actually seeing. Uh, the oil temperature that gets returned to the top of the oil pool really isn't as critical as what the pickup tube sees. So uh, keep that in mind when you're locating your temperature sensor. A lot of guys say not to put it in the strainer plate, but I don't see a problem with it. You can also uh, employ a sump, you know, for some extra oil. Uh, capacity and make a quart and a half and a four quart sump depending on what you have for clearance issues all right guys let me go it's gonna be it